Hi everybody, welcome to another comic episode of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Albert, and who's thrown in a city that's a jail with me tonight? Oh, that would be uh, Warden Kenneth Sanity here. <laughs> <laughs> the more, it just sounds so, so, so you probably just saw by the title of this episode. Um, we are covering a comic by the same name of the game that we're also going to be covering either the next day or two days from now you'll be hearing that episode because this is going to be kind of a companion piece something we haven't really done before but something i want to try since we're covering the batman arkham city comic from july 20 2011 to october 2011 a, little, a five-part mini series written by paul dini which many people know is the guy who wrote the batman animated show and also one of the main people instrumental in the creation of the character of Har- harley quinn who has since gone on to become very much an item of pop culture and comic fascination. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forget. He he was the one that, designed, that created her and everything. Yep. So it, it's he's a good person to write this because Harley does have such a presence in the games. He was also wrote Arkham City, too. I think he wrote Arkham Asylum, but I can't remember. So... Yeah, he wrote Arkham, Arkham City, and then that was it. He was not involved in Origins or Night. I'm not going to say you can tell, <laughs> but you can tell. <laughs> so we're not going to get too big into City, because we'll be doing that in the other episode you'll be hearing here shortly. But I do want to, because this comic, this wasn't originally planned, or this would have been better planned on the show. I I didn't even know this comic exist, existed until I was randomly looking for something to read online, and this just happened to pop up in my face, and I'm like, oh. And, it, and I was like, oh, I'll just read this quick. I just want something to read. I had no plan to do an episode about it. And after reading it, I got like, I want to record about it. So here we are. <laughs> so this and, comic, I mean, on the cover, it even said the prequel to the highly anticipated video game, which I think is funny, too. Well, I mean, it was highly anticipated. Like, oh, was. Let's not forget the game of the year cover, <laughs> which was one of the most highly memed video game covers of all time. I own it, but I own multiple copies of it. It's terrible. And (laughs) this comic opens up with the ending of Asylum, where you have Batman fighting Titan Joker, and and it shows you, you know, kind of the aftermath of what happened. And that's what I think is so cool, because I think this is six months before, like part of this comic starts off like six or a few months before Arkham City game start, Mm -hmm. at least when and the cool thing about the begin about the beginning of this comic is that yeah, it is right at the end of uh, Arkham Asylum, but you're also getting it from the Joker's point of view. Yes, like it, it starts off with him in a wheelchair in Asylum, and he's all beat up from Titan, and he's talking about you know just you know talking about what happened, and it it's cool to see how how messed up he still is from the Titan and what happened to him. Mm-hmm. And then like right after you get done with the Joker, of course you have to cut to Harley because those are the rules. Mm-hmm. And this is when she hears some, cause she's in a cell, of course, locked up too in Arkham, and she hears guards talking about how they're going to kill the Joker for what he did in Asylum. Mm-hmm. Which I had forgotten a little bit about this, because it, it happens, and then it, it cuts away to other things in this comic. This comic is very much, you know, building up to Arkham City, so it does jump around a little bit. Like, it talks, which I thought was very interesting, it talks more about Quincy Sharp and what was going through his head while Arkham City is being built. Because in Arkham City, when I, like, you didn't, you know, this is stuff that you wouldn't have known going up because it isn't explained in Asylum. It isn't really talked about. It was a new plot point, And I, that was cool that this comic really adds to it. Yeah, this really kind of goes, you know, how he went from, you know, Arkham Asylum Warden Quincy Sharp to Gotham Mayor Quincy Sharp. And it kind of shows his rise in power, which is really awesome. I mean, I, I think from a narrative point of view, and it, it shows how he got you know, went from, you know, point A to point B, but it also shows the help he's getting behind the scenes. Which is very interesting. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, you, so, it has some, like, you, you see him, you know, you know, he's getting ready to do a news conference, or an interview with, God, what the hell is the guy, Vicky Vale, and I can't remember, Jack Ryder? Yeah, sure. Okay, and right before this, you have a guy, a mysterious guy on a computer talking to him, telling him, hey, you're going to be all, you got this. You are Quincy Sharp. And while you're doing the interview, I like in one part, they bring up what happened to him in Arkham Town. They show him tied up with, you know, and gagged and Harley Quinn standing there. And they show him being let out on a gurney. They're like, you're not a hero. You weren't doing, you, you were beat up and, you know, in, incapable of doing anything. And I like how he, someone tells him in his ear and he twists it and he ends up trying to like just pass the, you know, Ignore what they're the facts that they're saying and come up with his own bullshit. How he was, you know, he everything fear, fear, fear. He just starts fear mongering, mm-hmm. 
Which and that makes us political, of course, but I have no idea where we've seen this before. <laughs> but then you uh, come to Jim Gordon watching this interview and talking with the Batman. This part I thought was interesting, too, because it talks about how there's people who are infused with Titan who are wrecking havoc in the city. And then I think they either they, they work for Two-Face, so Batman is going to go find Two-Face. And you have a whole scene where he ends up going to one of his old hideouts. And I, I like this scene, Two-Face. You see him all beat. Was he because he wasn't in Asylum, if I remember correctly? No, no. He, was he? No, I don't I, think so. It's been so long since I played Asylum. <laughs> I well, played it for the show not too long ago, but I'm pretty sure Two-Face is not in that game. And if he was, he was probably another afterthought, because that game was just crammed with so many people, but you glimpse him. Or oh, he's definitely not in it. There's, an East, there's a Riddler trophy where you find his cell, and you get, you know, has all the all the signs and stuff, vote dent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that one. That was, like, so, one yeah, of the only... definitely not in that game. But I, I like when you see his room, and you see, like, the thugs are standing with him, and you have these two girls, one wearing, like, a... Remind me of Alice in Wonderland outfit, another one wearing like a BDSM BDSM outfit because of two sides, and I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that reminded me. That was straight up like Batman Forever vibes for me right there. Oh god, don't mention that. Too. Okay, Forever was decent. I think it's been a long time. Yeah, Forever was all right. Batman and Robin, it had its points. But anyway, Batman wants to find out where these two Titan-infused jokesters, uh, Terry and Tracy Trask, are hiding. They call themselves TNT. So stupid. I do like, I, there's a little scene of them fishing out the Titan, which is cool because that's also a reference at the end of Arkham Asylum. There's a scene where you see them, depending on what ending you get, you'll see a different arm grab a Titan case that got on mm. the city. And so, like, this is like a super direct tie-in because it's literally, you know, working stuff in from the end of the game and going right into the beginning of the game. So as far as I think everything is concerned, this is Rocksteady canon. Not necessarily DC canon, but Rocksteady canon. Yeah, which I'm, I'm okay with. I like the fact that we're getting more, you know, more stuff and you know, kind of explains it. Like you have them, you know, in a city in a where, they're, where Mayor Sharp is announcing something about Arkham City being built and you see the creation of it. And you have them both show up and start just wrecking havoc and killing people. And Batman shows up to try to, you know, stop them. I, I think this is also, a, you know, adds more of what's really going on, which I thought was oh, very cool. Yeah, like, because in the game, you're kind of just left to be like, well, what on earth could make an entire city decide to wall off a chunk of it and put villains in? Well, this is the inciting incident. And, I mean, to me, it doesn't really make sense. But, you know, when you're in that kind of constant barrage of supervillains and then these two supervillains come and attack public figures and you know it it kind of you, you can see how it got there and this is more the story of you know arkham city itself as well as the story like the events and the people leading up to it like this is the creation of arkham city which I like. And again, you have like great because when he's fighting the two twins, they end up after he starts to kind of mess them up, they end up detonating themselves because some mysterious figure tells them to, which again, Sharp is able to use this. What happens, this whole climatic effect of people, you know, killing, killing, I think a hundred people. They say it's something about hundreds of people died in the explosion. And he's able to use that. Yeah. 300 dead to, you know, convince people, yes, I need to build Arkham City. And I, I, I like that because, again, that is proven in history where that has happened before, where people have used a traumatic event to take power. Yep. And he declares martial law, which is always a fear. And then basically just kind of strong arms Arkham City into happening. And the thing that, you know, reading this comic, playing through the game, all I could think of was No Man's Land, Batman's uh, No Man's Land. It was a comic series from a while back. It is incredibly long, probably over, you know, a thousand pages. Mm. Okay, that like, is a lot. It's big story, but there's a cataclysmic earthquake. Gotham gets shut off from the rest of the country. And everybody's just kind of left to survive on their own with the supervillains carving up territory and, you know, the cops trying to do their part. Batman's disappeared. Like, this whole storyline seems like No Man's Land light, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. 
it's much easier to digest than, you know, a thousand plus pages of deep, deep lore. <laughs> I do want to read No Man's Land someday, but it's a, it's the second issue that kind of breaks out with showing Arkham City being constructed. The mayor talking about how it's a good thing, how they're going to put these criminals away, and you know they can do their own thing in the city. And I and I like it because you know he kind of gained fair because of what happened, and it shows him destroying the shit the city. It shows um, Batman who's wondering what the hell is going on here because he doesn't believe that Sharp is intelligent enough to do this on his own. He thinks there must be another person involved, and he ends up going to. Um, the mayor's office, because now the, the the mayor's mansion has become the office in City Hall was destroyed in the first issue with the explosion. And I think this is very interesting because you kind of get to see his detective vision in the comic, too. Yeah, I was going to say, in case you forgot that this was based on the games, you absolutely get the same color scheme and detective vision that you do in the game, but in the comic book. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I like. But it's I, really I, cool. Like, I, like it. I do like that, you know, it has the fingerprints. And the temperature scan, the same stuff that you could do in the game with almost the same font exactly. Yeah. And I had but, forgotten because there's um there's an Easter egg in this comic where they talk about how Sharp was, you know, kind of believed himself to be the spirit of Amadeus Arkham, which is a reference if you scan all of the Arkham little statue things in the Arkham Sound game, that's when you get that plot point where he was the one that put him there and made all the recordings. Mm-hmm. Which you don't get if you don't do it, which I only I've read uh, I've done it once and I was like, Oh, okay, that's cool. I forgot completely about it. And it shows and that they were hunting Batman, too, that they were you know, keeping track of him. This is their first his first encounter with Hugo Strange. Well, he doesn't know who he is yet, but his character that I never even heard of until Arkham City. I was never familiar oh. with him. Oh, 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 man. I part of me wants to wait for the game episode to talk about how much I absolutely love Hugo Strange. We can wait for the game episode because that's a bigger. That'll be a bigger one than this. Yeah, but um if you don't know who Hugo Strange is, you can see that it is the same character with the round eyeglasses that was talking to Quincy Sharp during the interview. So if those, if the glasses and the beard out, uh, beard outline don't do it for you, at least you can connect those two. <laughs> okay. And I like how like the whole office was all a trap. They have, they have like a, ga- a sleeping gas. They try to do, they shoot him with rubber bullets. They try to electrocute him. Like the whole point of it all is to test his abilities and see what they can, you know, get of his style. Yeah, and none of it is lethal. All of it is very just meant to annoy so that they can see what ba- what tricks Batman has up their sleeves. And obviously, this is important because they want to know what Batman can do. Yeah. And I do really like that when he's shutting the systems down, it's the same interface from the game when you're trying to hack something. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay, that is cool. That made me so happy. It was such a little thing, but I loved it. And then it wraps up. Or, and then I, one thing I thought, another part they do here is they show Aaron Cash from the first game, his only real thing in this comic, where it shows some just random guy who is probably kind of insane, who is in you know Arkham Asylum, and there he's going to be transferred city. He's like, I don't want to go. I'm not a joker. I'm not a scarecrow. I'm just some guy. Like, I, you know. I never hurt anyone that didn't attack me, that didn't hurt me first. Like, it's, you know, it just shows you kind of the, the craziness of what they're doing, just throwing these random people in a giant, you know, city just to pretty much to die. Yeah, and this is, you know, obviously you're going to have your Mr. Zaz and your Jokers and your Two-Faces in there. But then this also focuses on the little guys, you know, the the disassociatives and, you know, the ne'er-do-wells, just common guys that are going to get thrown into this pit. And you can see that the cash doesn't like it at all. Like he's not a fan. No, and I, and I like that. I like that he realized something's wrong. And then it also kind of shows you in the next scene where you have some of the guards are wheeling Joker, who's supposed to be being taken Arkham City. Also, except you know they kind of make some comments and they wheel into the elevator, and you see these guys wearing masks but with smiley faces on them. And also, <laughs> masks probably wouldn't be as normal in this, you know, because this is in twenty twenty. So I thought that was kind of funny, too, because now I'm like, Matt, oh, that's normal. Everybody wears masks. But at this, you know, it wouldn't have been considered normal. So you would know something's up, that they're all just wearing masks. And it looks like we got a bunch of friends that are out for blood. I like this, though. I like that it shows that the guards are, you know, they're angry at him for what he did because he killed a lot of people in Arkham Asylum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he killed a lot of people. So I thought that was very interesting and then like they're about to kill him if not for the fact that harley quinn had disguised herself because she had heard earlier that the guards are going to kill joker so she ends up just going in there massacring the guards and rescuing joker and i think this is cool to get to see harley quinn fighting and being more than just 
you know, just his sidekick. Like, he's actually doing something. I thought that was interesting to see. Yeah, like, knowing that Joker would pretty much be completely boned if not for her in this case. And he's actually not being the piece of shit that he normally is. Like, he's kind of like, oh, behind you. And, like, being very nice and appreciative. And I'm pretty sure we all know that's only because she's helping him out in that moment. But it is nice to see Harley actually being proactive in doing something for once. Me too. I, I agree with that. It's, it's nice to see. And then when they, they escape on a boat to get out of Arkham Asylum, and you have this whole whole scene where Batman ends up, he has cameras in the boat, so he knows who's leaving, who's coming, who's going, which, again, fits Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, blows up their boat pretty much, which I thought was interesting. Like, he, well, yeah, he hits their boat, so it crashes, and then they blow themselves up, essentially, and end up sinking underwater on a little sub, escaping. <laughs> Yep, and they make it into a drainage tunnel, which very wonderfully leads to right to the inside of Arkham City, where they find themselves in front of a Cyanus factory, which just made me happy. Oh, because, well, I mean, again, that leads up to where Arkham City takes it, though. Yeah, I mean, you get the foundry, but anytime I see a Black Mask reference, I'm always going to be happy. Oh, are you a big fan of Black Mask? I enjoy Black Mask. I, I have a... Okay. I have a soft spot for the gangsters, like Penguin, Two-Face, Black Mask, like the actual, like the crime guys that aren't super human or they're not, you know, incredibly insane like the Joker. They're just some dudes that are trying to put the work in. And yeah, Two-Face may be a little messed up and Penguin's a little rotund and Black Mask might be a little bit crazy and preoccupied with daddy issues. But they're just, they're trying to get the work in. And they're trying to get it. <laughs> respect. Just respect. All right. And I, I'm a big fan of the issue th- three cover that has Harley Quinn and Joker on the cover. And Harley Quinn's holding the gun right at the cover. I just, I, I really like that cover. That is a really great cover. For you guys that can't see it, I mean, Harley Quinn's basically just pointing the gun directly at the at the reader. Mascara, eyeshadow is a bit smudged. Joker's in the background looking absolutely insane. Like he does. It's a very nice cover. And I think this is probably my favorite issue of the entire five volume set here. This is a much different issue, too, because it opens up with a character. You have no idea who he is. And I meant I had no idea who that was. Just some random thug they put it who's in, trying to enlist to work with the Joker and go as a scientist industries. And you can kind of see that people are they're building the whole amusement park that you will see later in the game. I thought it's really interesting. I liked it a lot. I was curious. I didn't know who the hell he was. I didn't put two and two together at all. <laughs> so basically what happens, he shows up at Sinus Industries at the foundry, essentially, and he gets on a roller coaster cart that supposedly is going to bring him to the Joker or a furnace, either or. But this uh, thug, he's quick on his feet, jumps, grabs a hold of uh, some kind of a hose or wire or something, swings to the other side of the tracks that have been blown out. And it's clear now that the Joker is testing him to see if he's worthy of being part of the gang. Which is, and then he ends up, you know, he ends up passing all the tests. He gets, he gets a little mask. He even has a little thing where he, um, Joker has like the fake, you know, shock somebody. So he ends up shocking one of, he grabs one of the guard's hands. And then, and all of a sudden you see him just throw his mask in the garbage and just leave. And then he goes all the way to Penguin's hideout and it shows him enlist with the Penguin. And there's one little like, cameo thing that I that I didn't I forgot completely about, but it made me smile now that I when I reread this comic is he he there's a guard that he's in Penguin's you know museum place his hideout, and the guard just just ends up pissing him. One of the soldiers ends up pissing him off because he had betrayed him, and he opens the door and says, "You you can talk to the man downstairs," which I had <laughs> completely forgotten what that reference was until recently. I don't want to say it, but I forgot. I was like, okay, I like this. Yep. Yeah. That. Um... That's definitely a happy little thing. And you know what he's going down there to deal with, and you're not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. I know what's happening. But we'll get to that. And then it shows it shows this, this thug go with a bunch of penguin henchmen to go stop one of the tiger vehicles that's transporting weapons still in Arkham City, because they're still transporting things before Arkham City is officially closed off and finished. And you have the Joker thugs also show up because that's who he's holding information to. And I, I like the scene where the guy ends up destroying. He ends up throwing a grenade at the Joker, throws a grenade in the gun. I mean, pulls all the guns. And Penguin's like, you destroyed the guns? It was the only way to save your men. But you destroyed the guns. And I like that Penguin just doesn't give a shit at all about his people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he, at least he doesn't kill him. 
he just cuts the Stugs to half pay and puts him on, you know, on point to lead a strike on Joker's hideout. Essentially to kill him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, and then there's right here where things like he ends up escaping. All of a sudden you notice this whole time it was Batman. Oh, yeah. He I pulls did not. I was a little surprised. Like, okay, I didn't, I, you know, it, it seems really simple. Like I should have put two and two together, but I did not for some reason. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the beard. The beard and the big mustache, you can't possibly think it's going to be Batman. He looks like a biker, and you don't get that Batman jawline. And then this also shows that he had a he used an old tugboat where he hid his bat one of his bat his bat boat in the old tugboat, a little bat sub, and then he that's how he would get in and outside of Arkham City at first. So he was able to do surveillance on what's going on, which also again leads to why the game happens the way it does. And I thought that was really cool. And you see that Strange is watching him, like Strange is watching everything that he's doing and watching and learning about Batman. Oh, yeah, because if Batman's doing surveillance, he can't possibly be the only one. Mwahaha. And it's issue four that starts off with just an exploding boat and Batman in the air being, like, blown up. Being like, well, that didn't work, because it shows that Strange had figured out about his little hiding and ended up blowing up the boat so he couldn't come and go anymore. And they even, like, right off the way start, all right, well, no more Lester Kurtz, which was the thug's name in the last one. I don't know if we mentioned that or not, but the tiger security troops from Gotham city just immediately descend on Batman. Which I've never like seen him fight all the tiger troops. And he talks about how they've been watching you and studying you. So they know every move you're doing and everything. Mm -hmm. And this shady character is hacked into Batman's comp system. <laughs> that, that is cool too. I, I like how strange did that. And he's just talking to him. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. It's kind of terrifying, honestly, because Batman's whole thing is techni technological superiority for the most part. And you got somebody who is hacked into his tech. Oh, it's good. <laughs> I like how he's pretty much like he's going to be captured by these guards until Catwoman and who stole a truck crashes in, shows up and rescues him. And I, I think that's cool because he because Strange had planned for everything, but he didn't plan for Catwoman. All right, because Catwoman's just a thief. Why would she help the Batman? Yeah, and there's another really cool scene because she talks about what she's doing in Arkham City because she's looking for loot because, you know, what's going on. And she ends up rescuing Ivy. She has a little, you know, scene where she shows she rescued Ivy and Ivy killed the guards. And Ivy had told her to go water her plants while she's inside Arkham City and don't let them die. She's like, I promise, which also leads to why Ivy is mad at her, which I, which always is not completely explained in the game. And I like the fact I got this little thing I was missing. Yep, and it's not even like a major story beat. It's just a little, hey, water my plants. Okay, if you don't, I'm going to be mad. All right. And then <laughs> now just now we get it. It's fun. It Ivy. And when you see Joker, like you, because it cuts to Joker with a doctor who can't save him. And so a Joker does like, okay, you can go home. And he has him get on one of the little clown cards that we saw earlier in the issue. But this guy is not is not Batman, so he doesn't or the last is he doesn't jump up and grab a pipe. He just falls to his death <laughs> in the front. Into the incinerator. Oh well. And there's another good interrogation scene, which also kind of you know kind of leads into what you can do in the game too, where you um, he ends up capturing a tiger guard, and he's trying to figure out who's who's in charge of Quincy because he knows Quincy's a puppet, and this is when he's holding the guy above a roof, and he, the guy's like, "It's Hugo, Hugo Strange." And that's when you get the great shot of Hugo Strange kind of steepling his fingers under his chin, Batman reflecting in the eyes of his goggles, that weird little beard of his just being weird. It's oh, funny. I love Hugo Strange. And then this brings us to the, the final chapter of the little prologue comic book, which, you know, he figured out Hugo Strange's name and he goes back to the Batcave. And was it just me or did you also have a big issue with how Robin Robin is drawn, because I really don't like the way he's drawn. Yeah, like this is it's like mean, Schwarzenegger is, Robin. Yeah, it's Schwarzenegger Robin. I, you know what? Actually, it's closer to Dolph Lundgren Robin because you got the <laughs> high tight blonde crew cut, and you know, just a big wrist gauntlets. Like it kind of almost looks like um, Rob Liefeld. <laughs> <laughs> like one of his or drawings, or him in person? No, like the the drawings because. Homeboy's got pouches all over his belt. I got that joke. <laughs> and you never see his feet. <laughs> I got that joke also. Yeah. <laughs> I like how they're talking about how they're going to, you know, they're going to expose Hugo to the, you know, that this is the guy being the, you know, the, the puppet master for Quincy Sharp. And before they can even do that, 
he, Quincy Sharp ends up acknowledging who Hugo is and said, oh, he hired him to, you know, work with him and he's a secret collaborator and pretty much beats him to the punch of what they were going to do. And I, and I like that's cool because Hugo Strange is countering every move that Batman would make. Yep. Even before he makes it like that's how much Hugo Strange understands Batman, which is I really like. Oh, and, yeah. And it shows like I think this is the opening of Arkham City finally or when it's finally done. I can't remember if it close to being done or just finished or whatnot but i know he's given a press conference and he introduces hugo strange is with him and this is when bruce wayne shows up talking about how hugo strange was this you know terrible doctor and things and worked at arkham asylum and that you know he's how terrible you know he's a terrible human being essentially Mm -hmm. and i like this where it it shows all that and then it end and then it ends with hugo strange saying though i'm amused at your attempts to try because he's trying to stop Mm -hmm. arkham city and that's Kind of where it, it's where the comic mostly ends, except for like kind of what's happening at the same time. But the most, oh God, one of the more important things in here, and uh, I don't remember if it was in the main comic here. I think it was. No, no. Yep. Yeah. I came to the logical conclusion that Batman and Bruce Wayne were the same person some time ago. And that, that right there is what makes Hugo Strange one of the most dangerous villains in the DC universe because he knows. <laughs> okay. No, Arkham city hadn't opened yet. The press conference opens up a little bit after this, where they talk about how James Gordon has no chance, but has no choice, but stand by and watch as the tiger troops have taken over and they're the ones running Arkham city. It talks about how Zaz escaped, but they let Zaz escape so they could show him on TV being captured and put back in Arkham city. Yep. And it's basically just kind of, showcasing even more how Hugo Strange is just setting everything up to make Quincy Sharp look like a savior and to put himself in a position of unbelievable power. But, well, things happen when you decide to arrest Bruce Wayne and shove him in the city. (laughs) Which does not happen in this comic, but yes, soon. That's how the game starts. And this is a direct, like, just slotting right into the beginning of the game and you also have like it shows you have a couple good drawings of like two-face and the penguin and catwoman kind of showing what they're doing right before everything happens poison ivy but the poison ivy drawing has a skeleton in the bottom corner with vines going through the guy's skull which i'm like oh that is cool (laughs) she's such a badass looks like a tiger troop yeah Uh uh-huh and then you have riddler and then it shows because you know every you know all the villains are pretty much in there you know which i think is it's Definitely cool. I definitely would have, if I would have read this back in the day, it would have really gotten me excited for the game. Even though I already was excited, I had to pre order everything. Mm-hmm. And okay. You have the picture of the Joker, and the Joker does not look well. He looks weak. He's starting to get blotchy. Harley's in the background, and you can definitely see that there are tears. Like, this is setting the stage for a weakened Joker. Which I, I like how she's sad, though. Like, that, I think that's really cool. She looks so sad. Uh, And, you know, it's a sad thing. Because, you know, we know that something's wrong. I think they do. (laughs) She does, too. Yep. At the time, we wouldn't, you know, we'd have no idea where it's going, though. Well, yeah, I mean, before we played the game, now having the benefit of hindsight... Because I I knew about this this comic series when you know it came out. I just never cared enough to read it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I am actually glad that I have read it now because like it is. I I love Batman stories, but because this one was more tied to the games, I didn't really care about it as much. But I will absolutely say that I am glad that I've read this because even though it's not DC continuity, it is absolutely Rocksteady continuity. Yeah. And delving as deeply into those games as I have in the past number of years, you know, I'm I am very glad to have this in between story. And honestly, they should have included this with the game, like with the game of the year edition that came out. This should have been like an extra. Okay, I I agree with you 100% because it, I mean, again, it's not like you could probably find this comic, you know, later on. I'm sure it wasn't around very long because comics like this don't last long. I mean, just a five issue miniseries, not like it's going to be on the shelf for long. You didn't, you know, have it pre-ordered. Yep. And, you know, I actually, I really do feel like it, it definitely 
rewarded the people who read it. I, I agree with that because it, it added a little more for me as somebody who loves stories to have a little bit more background going into Arkham City. And um, yeah, it was it was a good read. It was a solid read. I'm actually looking it up now to see if it actually ever got a, a trade. A trade. Because you also read the digital trade, which comes with um, seven digital digital only comics, which I did not read because I saw the art. Got upset. All of them, though, it comes with some of them, which is weird. Like it doesn't come with all of them, but the most interesting one is the first digital only comic. Oh, this did get a trade, actually. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's eighteen dollars. You can purchase it now. <laughs> If you want. Digital comics, the one that you read, the first one you said talks about Hugo Strain. You made a comment before recording that really got me interested. Yeah, it it shows how Hugo Strange basically creates his tiger troops, and he does it by brainwashing them he, with a combination of drugs and audio and visual uh, hypnotizing, essentially, to the point where they're murderous. And there is a really interesting scene where it shows him basically indoctrinating an army sniper into his tiger troops. And by the end of it, this sniper is tearing monitors off the wall, just screaming, kill the bat. Wow. So that to me just goes to show that Arkham city was never about the Joker or two face. It was about Batman. It's just cool to think about. Oh Yeah. Like, I yes. really, really like the idea of what they're doing here. Which is, I, I really like about this game, too, and this comic, that it is lining everything up so well. And is there any other digital comics that you wanted to mention before we move on? Um, there was actually an interesting digital comic where um, it focused on the Riddler. And basically, it was how the Riddler got out of Arkham Asylum and into Arkham City. And he, you know, traded some favors with Poison Ivy and had somebody have to, like, figure out his riddle to come, you know, get a big payment and drop stuff off so that he could get out. It was just a fun little thing th showing how, you know, Riddler kind of, you know, sets everything up so that, yes, he is the smartest man in the room. He gets his, you know, signature suit. He gets to Arkham City where he's got his entire lair set up. And presumably from here is where he goes about distributing all those goddamn Riddler trophies. <laughs> Which I hate, too, by the way. <laughs> and then in other ones, you have, like, Robin fighting Harley. You have Bane fighting with one of the, uh, t the Titan infused thugs which is where like at the end of it you see that bane's like no titan's the most dangerous and destructive thing i've encountered so that kind of sets this you know the stage for him like being like no titan's bad we gotta destroy it and then in the digital trade there's also some uh some nice concept sketches from the game <laughs> okay that's cool that's not in here because i'm just looking at the digital trade version i don't have the i don't have what you have <laughs> But you got um, you got prototype drawings for Mister Freeze and a certain somebody who's hiding under the floorboards, and you got some great drawings of Two Face, which just makes me happy because Two Face is one of my favorite villains. <laughs> some very uh, cool character designs of uh, Harley, Joker, Hugo Strange, and a certain Demon's daughter who may or may not <laughs> show. And there's also a Bane issue, a Robin issue, and then stuff has to do with Scarface for some reason and Joker, which I am looking at glancing as we're talking. But yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting little extra stuff they added in these digital comics, which I unfortunately did not read because I saw the art and I had turned away and didn't want nothing to do with them. Which is <laughs> fair. I mean, they're not done in the same art style as the main comics. It looks it looks like a digital comic, honestly. It's yeah, and I've never been. I mean, I read digitally everything now for the most part. But I don't. I, do, I don't like digital only comics. I feel like that's a waste, a kind of or something, or maybe just kind of the same pedigree of a regular comic book because you're not willing to print it. So it's also Mister Freeze issue two to wrap it up for yeah. all the Arkham City comics. And it's you know it's they're fun little side stories. These ones don't feel as much like canon as the main five issue series, but they're they're you know fun. Yeah, I, I should have read them. I just did not. 
<laughs> okay, that about wraps up this part. I think we should go to shelf stacker box, and I'll go first. This is going to go in the stack, because it wasn't something that I'm really going to recommend to people. I mean, it's a cool little add-on. If you enjoy Arkham City you and you love the Batman Arkham world, this is something definitely worth reading, because it adds more insight to what's going on, gives you a little bit more excitement and extra little small things for the Arkham game. So I'm going to put it in the stack. I'm really glad we read it. I'm glad I found it by accident. So, yeah. How about you, Kenneth? I, I too, would definitely put it in the stack. Like, it's not among my favorite Batman stories, but it's not bad enough to shove it away in a box and never see it again. This is, it's something that, you know, I might want to revisit the next time I decide to start up Arkham City again and maybe go for that, you know, full completion, which I'll get one of these days. <laughs> but, no, it, it, it's an absolutely fine comic book. If you like the world of uh rock Setti's arkham games i definitely would recommend you know checking it out maybe if you don't want to pay 18 dollars for the paperback just buy the digital version it's less money you get a couple of those digital uh comics thrown in at the end you get the concept art it's cool definitely oh, give it a shot and there also is a, a book series called batman arkham unhinged which went for 42 issues Oh, yes. Which is also set, or not 42, 58 issues, sorry, which is also set in the same world. Wow. And, like, the continuity just doesn't make sense to me because it's kind of all over the place. (laughs) Arkham Unhinged kind of deals with, like, the direct lead-in to Catwoman's opening in the game. It deals with more stuff about strange knowing who batman is okay it's have you read it before i've read it once like part like i've read a few of the issues and didn't end up continuing it i'm looking right now and it shows that you can buy the hardcover edition of all of the comics in here for like a hundred dollars which if you got it more power to you but this is still you know kind of tangent offshoots to the Arkham City storyline. A lot of it is, you know, oh, this was like they have one where Bruce Wayne is reunited with Talia Al Ghul. That happens five years before Arkham City. And have, you know, what happens when the Joker found the factory. And like just weird side stories. Okay. I'll probably never read it now, but I'm glad I just never knew it even existed. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's definitely a weird thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I do want to uh, point out that uh, the $108 hardcover, over a 1,000 pages, that collects all of the Arkham comics from, you know, oh. Asylum all the way up through Night. Okay, Night has a lot of comics, which I do plan to do on this show eventually, when yeah. we get to Night. So, all right, I think that about knocks out this episode. And if you enjoyed this, please go listen to Arkham City. It should come out, like I said, the day after... Or it's coming out soon. So Arkham City will be up for you very soon. I mean, this is very much um, a companion piece episode is what is what I'm going for with this. And if you enjoy this, we have covered other Batman episodes. We did Batman the Killing Joke, Comic 22, Batman Arkham Asylum, Episode 97, Batman the Long Halloween, Episode 17, Batman Death of the Family, Comic 8, Batman Hush, Comic 3. And then in Episode 3, we covered the Batman game for Genesis a long damn time ago. So if you want to hear a very old episode, go track that one down. But... I don't recommend those early ones. And want to give a shout out to our awesome intro and outro, courtesy of Bobby, a.k.a. Mike Tony from his EP Bite the Bullet, Song the Cool Kid Squad. Definitely go check out his YouTube channel. And I want to thank you guys for listening. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. That's for Arkham City. <laughs> <laughs>